Hello, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Miss Nunez, and I am a computer science teacher working primarily with middle school students this year. Um, we are working our way through the unit on creating apps with devices uh, using the Circuit Playground in the Code.org platform. Um, so we've, we're working on Lesson 6 tonight. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each level with you and uh, help out, scaffold, read the directions, do what I can. Um, this is uh, something that's open to everyone to use. If you find it helpful, amazing. So let's get started. Uh, so it says lesson six, variables and if statements. Before we dive into the levels, I want to draw your attention over here. In the top right hand corner is an icon that says lesson resources. And if we open that, I'm going to open it in a new tab. Um, we're going to see all the really important information that you're going to need to know while working on this lesson. So we have some new code. Um, we have some resources, including some videos, some handouts. And then, of course, you've got the levels where you're going to be working on things. So looking at the code, we have... Um, the less than sign, so blank is less than blank. We have the equals to, so blank is equal to blank. And then we have the blank is greater than blank. All right, so these you should sort of recognize from a math class, uh, but we're actually going to get to use them in our code this lesson. Uh, the next one is our if this, then this. So if condition, if statement, um, and this is this is a lot simpler than a lot of people tend to think it is. Uh, pretty much, if it's raining outside, grab an umbrella. If it is a Monday, uh, teacher's probably going to be at school. If, um, let's see. I don't know. If it's the fourth Thursday of November, it's Thanksgiving in the United States, right? So if this, then this, that's, that's all this says. Uh, again, we've got our variables. So variable X gets fill in the blank and then X gets fill in the blank. So this is what you put at the top of your code when you're actually uh, defining the variable. And then this is what you put in your code as you're going because you've already defined it. So now you're saying whatever you 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 called this it, you're actually going to call into play in the code using this line um probably sounded a little confusing i promise you it does get easier uh and then in our resources we have our handouts so if i click on these there's one handout Oop. this one says if statements so that's how if statements work um, this one says the counter pattern is another one. So this is how to set up a counter pattern, uh, which we will be using in this lesson. And then this, there's another one. So variables, um, as we were playing around with variables in class, I had a, a lot of students who were like, this is silly. Why don't I just type in the answer, uh, in the code that I'm working with? And again, that is absolutely fine. If you've got like four lines of code, but in reality, we don't work with four lines of code. We work with 400 lines of code or 4,000 lines of code. And so you want to make sure that you've got your variables set up. Usually the very first thing you're going to see in the code is the variables. Um, and you get them set up. And that way, when you need to change a variable, you don't have to go back and change it 400 times. You only have to change it once. So variables are really important as you get into more and more complex coding, but they're extremely good to get started with uh, learning how to use, just like comments in your code. Comments in your code are extremely important, not when you have five lines of code, but when you have 50 or 500 or 5,000 lines of code. So getting into good habits now is going to make you a better coder later. All right. So we've got our resources. We've got to introduce code. Let's get into actually getting into the levels. Uh, I am going to close these because I've already read through them. However, you know, again, these resources are great to refer to as you go. They're also really good for anybody that likes to have that paper copy to be able to, you know, kind of flip through and look back on as you're going through things. Feel free to print out these resource papers, put them in your binder, um, or ask your teacher to. Ha. All right, um, so levels one, we're going to get started here. So let's click on that. 
All right. And this is a predict lesson or level. So this one is asking, read through the code. And actually, I'm not going to paraphrase. I'll read the whole directions. It says prediction. The code below has a new block called variable. Read the code below, then make a prediction for what will happen on the screen when the code is run. What do you think will happen to the rectangles? All right, so when you see VAR like that, that says variable. So variable rectangle width gets 320. You notice I don't say equals. Equals is different in coding. What this is doing is anytime this sees this word or a collection of words, this variable, it is going to get 320 and slide it in to the code. So line two, variable rectangle height gets 150. All right. So line three says set size. The blue rectangle up here, this one right here, and then we're going to, instead of rectangle width, we're going to have what? 320. Instead of rectangle height here, we're going to have 150. So in the end, so if we start up here, this is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Um, and then rectangle width right now is set to 66. So we're saying it's actually going to be 320. So if coming over here. I have an idea. Yep, it's going to go. So this is going to set the size of the blue rectangle to cover all the way from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. And we know that because if you look at your cursor, it says X uh, 318. And that's because I'm oh, there. We go 319. I'm almost to the edge. If I were on the actual edge, there we go. It would say 320. All right. So we know that the blue rectangle is going to go all the way across the screen. And then rectangle height is 150. So it's going to start here, all right, up here, and then it's going to go to here, all right. So we're going to see that happen with the blue rectangle. Then it looks like the pink rectangle has got the same width, the same height, the green rectangle, the same width, the same height. So I think, I believe, okay, I believe that the three rectangles will fill the screen and cover all of the white background. All right, I think that's gonna happen. Let's see if I'm right, let's see if I'm wrong. Um, because what's interesting is it doesn't tell us where, ooh, actually it does. All right, so it tells us that this one's gonna start here, so zero and 150. This one's gonna start here, zero and 300. I do, I think it's gonna cover the whole screen. So let's run it and see what happens. Excellent. All right. So we were right. Excellent. Pat on the back. Um, okay. And I want to point out a couple things before I hush and move on to the next level. And that is one, you see the turtle and the hair down here. So this slider will tell you whether or not the code is going to be read quickly or the code is going to be read slowly. So if I move it over here all the way to the hair and then I reset and I run it, all right, it will automatically set itself up. If I move this slider over here, what you'll notice is that it's going to read line by line by line and slow enough where you can actually follow along. So let's do that. We're going to reset and we're going to run. So we see line one, line two, line three, line four, line five. And it was slow enough where we could actually follow along and read the code with it. All right. So that's the first thing I want to point out. The other thing I want to point out is over here in the right bottom corner, you see two uh, watchers. And so rectangle width is our first variable and rectangle height is our second variable. And over here, the really cool thing is if we reset, um, at first it says undefined. And then as we run the code, and I'm going to run it slow again, you can see that the rectangle width suddenly is defined. And then when we get to line two, the rectangle height is defined. All right. And so what this is really good for is as you get into the counter patterns, as you get into other types of coding, you're going to see that every time your variable is updated, it will update in the watchers. And that way it kind of helps you keep track. If something breaks, it helps show you where. Uh, so it's really, really good to set your variables up. And I'll show you how to do that once we actually get into the coding on this lesson. So I think that's it for level one. I'm going to click on the orange finish button and I will see you guys on level two. All right, let's go.